Trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors trading on margin. Utilizing leverage can carry even higher level of risk that can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange market or using any of our software alert products, you should carefully and diligently consider your personal investment objectives, level of experience, and risk tolerance. There is a possibility that you could potentially sustain significant loss. You should not invest any capital or trade that you cannot afford to lose. It is your responsibility to be aware of and understand all risks associated with foreign exchange trading and to seek professional advice from an independent certified financial advisor if you have any doubts. Avoria Prime does not exercise trading authority over your trades. You and you alone exercise discretionary trading authority over every trade all right so in the dashboard here we are going over getting the dashboard set up so first thing first all right you want to drop a chart all right you want to just open a chart up so it doesn't matter which one you open up come underneath file underneath the word file and again i'm inside my ap this is my ap uh vps underneath the word file you see this icon here is a chart a white piece of paper looking thing with a green plus sign called create new chart. Click on that one and just select a pair. All right. Here's one to 10 recommended pairs here. All right. We're going to open this all the way, expand that. And the first thing I want to do is add the dashboard. All right. To add the dashboard, you want to make sure you come up here to this template. It's the furthest icon to the right. It's the icon that's farthest right. Put your mouse over. You see it says templates. Select that. If you do not see arrow or blackout underneath your templates, submit a ticket right away. All right, submit a ticket right away. Let them know if you don't see one or the other, if you don't see both. So the first thing I wanna submit is the blackout. Submit blackout, all right? Now there might be an issue if your, uh, you said yours wasn't showing any data. If the market is closed, it will not populate data. So if you tried doing it yesterday on Saturday, the market's closed. If you tried doing it earlier today, the market is closed. It only shows data when the market is open, all right? So the first thing we do is pull up a chart, then we drop blackout template on it, all right? We got that on there. Next, we come here. Underneath the word charts is this icon here, gold folder, gold star. That's the navigator. Select navigator, all right? Select the navigator, all right? You should look like this underneath your navigator, all your different icons. You wanna come over here to expert advisors. Hit the plus sign, all right? Hit the plus sign for expert advisors, double click and hit arrow dashboard, all right? Underneath common, don't worry about about, come to common, make sure you have these four all check mark, all right? Also, another reason why you always may not be populating data, right? If you are not properly logged in to your account, it won't show any data either. Down here in the bottom right-hand corner above the time, on your uh, VPS inside your MT4, it needs to show how many kilobytes you're, you're running right now, your kilobyte speed. If it says disconnected, if it says invalid account, you are not logged in properly. You must log in, all right, must log in. Once you got these four here selected, underneath the uh, common page, come to inputs page, all right? Uh, if you just want, now here's the settings. Here's where all the magic happens because you won't use dependencies. You're only gonna use common to select these four and then you're gonna use inputs to make all your changes. I don't use all 28 pairs because I don't trade all 28 pairs. All right, it's a lot to look at. Some people wanna look at it all, that's fine. All right, you can select all 28 pairs. You can select which time frames. I'm gonna come here and double click on this, select the drop down menu and go to own pair list, all right? As you can see here, you can look at the core seven, which are the seven major pairs. You can look at the top 14 or all 28. And then you can also pull up just the pairs that are, you know, based on the actual currency, AUD pairs, you know, GBP pairs, JPY pairs, so forth and so on. All right, I utilize more than just Forex pairs. So I select own pair list so I can create my own list. All right, next come down to timeframes. All right, now you want the dashboard to monitor for you. I don't look at all time frames. W1, delete, D1, delete, and then H4, yes, I use that, but since H4 is the last one I use, I take the comma away. I use H1 and then M30, I don't use M30. So I'm gonna delete M30 and I'm gonna delete the M1. So you can see here, M5 comma, M15 comma, H1 comma, H4. Whatever the last one is, no comma. 
Those are the four that I use. No spaces in between, just comma only. And then underneath own pairs, all right. Select, double click the inside that list, hit delete to take out all those pairs. Now, I'm going to type in all the 10 pairs that are recommended, that I recommend, you know, for utilizing Arrow. They're the best performing. Uh, I recommend just based on their volatility. And then also the other pairs that I actually trade. All right. So, GBP, JPY, you see, all capital, no space, comma. GBP USD, all caps, no space, comma. GBP AUD, no space, comma. GBP NZD, no space, comma. GBP CAD, no space, comma. GBP CHF, no space, comma. That's all the GBP pairs. Next are the euros. EUR GBP, no space, comma. EUR. Uh, AUD, no space, comma, EURNZD, no space, comma, EURJPY, JPY, no space, comma. Next is gold, XAU, USD, all capital, no space, comma, then SP 500, so SPX 500, all right, no space, comma, all right. And then uh, GER30, no space, comma, uh, UK100, no space, comma. And the last one, I believe, is uh, JPN225, all caps. All right. Another reason why some pairs may not populate is because you entered them incorrectly. You must enter them incorrectly based on the way your broker has them cataloged. And I'll show you where to find that out exactly. All right. Now, as far as the alerts, allow Telegram. Don't worry about that one. Show alerts, true. Alerts message, we turn that to true. Alert sound, true. All right. And email, I don't want to email. All right. Next is template. It is right now is default. Double click that and just type in AIRO, all capital, A I R O. Because when you, and I'll show you why. All right, that's why, you know, so when you pull up a chart, it will pull it up with the arrow template on it. And then down here, ADR number of days, turn that to 10. All right, you can go ahead and take a screenshot of this year if you want to. This is the way that I set mine up. All right, this is the way that I set mine up. All right. Next is select OK. All right, give it a second to pull up. Close it. There it is. Boom, everything populated. All right, now, as you can see here, UK 100 JPN 225, all right, are not populating information. So, where do I go to see that I have put in my pairs the right way? View symbols and then you find it all right i know jpn 225 and uk 100 are indexes so i'm going to come to indexes and you can see uk 100 right there i need to i need to select it all right and then jpn 225 i need to select it all right close that and there it is now they're selected now they're populating all right, now they're selected, so now they're populating. But that is where you go to find how pairs are cataloged on your broker. View symbols. So some, some brokers have, like for Forex pairs, they may be AUD, USD uh, with a plus sign. You need to include that plus sign. So you need to put down, you know, AUD, USD, plus sign, then a comma. All right, whatever it shows here before the parentheses, you need to have it is dot cash dot C-A-S-H, dot pro, dot V-A-R. You need to put that before the comma. It has to be the exact way that it's cataloged. Otherwise, it won't show up. Now, that's how it, that's how you set it up there. Let me stop sharing and make sure you get those questions here. All right.
Jaleel caught a quick 10 pips on you, Jay. Congrats. Congrats. Uh, all right, Xavier, does that help? Does that help, Xavier? Uh, Gabrielle, I need help to start using software. Gabrielle, where do you need help with the software at? Are you, you at the very beginning? Have you set anything up? Uh, Daniel, your VPS and MT4 are all... All right, so Daniel, you all set up there. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, so I don't really know. All right, we got two more that need help, like from the very beginning. So let's just go with this from the beginning here. All right. All the videos on the website, guys. All the videos on the website as well. Just so you guys are aware of that. All right. I'll show you where so that you uh, can understand where to go and find all that information. All right. Let me pull the website up for you guys real quick. Let me log in. All right, so log in here real quick to the website. You guys can see us here. So log into uh, voidprime.com, all right? Uh, I've already selected AP Academy, so I'm on the AP Academy page, all right? Now, I'm gonna show you where to go find all the videos to help you to set up on everything. Also, the, going over Arrow, also the videos that show you all about the, um, uh, the strategies, all right? So once you're at AP, uh, Academy, it's at the very top of the page. You bring this page here. You want to select my first steps. All right, under, under, under my first steps, you have these four modules that you need to go through. Modules one, two, three, and four. You need to go through and watch all the videos of these modules, all right? And then next, what you want to do is you want to come up here after you're done to my products. All right, it's going to take you to which products that you have. And the products you have here, again, you want to go ahead and watch this video about my products page. Uh, in here, uh, Mr. Chris Simone will talk to you about, uh, you know, very briefly, a minute and 12 seconds about the my products page. You can see here under indicators, it'll show arrow. Select access setup course. If you did not see this here, it does not say enrolled, you do not have the software. And then you, know, you need to select the Arrow software, all right? I'll show you where to select that at if you're brand new. All right, if you've got this shown here, select the Access Setup course. All right, and then when you've done that, you come down here, here is everything. Video from me about Arrow, just an overview. Next is an actual, how to set up your VPS, all right? Next is how to set up Arrow. Then all the videos for the strategies, one through 10. All right, that's where you find everything at. All right, uh, and we'll go back. All right, now let's go back here. All right, so back on the uh, this page here. Uh, I'm going to select this little three lines right here to bring up the menu. If you don't have it up, most of the time, it you know, every time I've always logged in, it's default always open. And the first thing you want to do is you want to select uh, AP Marketplace. Select the AP Marketplace and then go to Switch Tools. AP Marketplace, then select Switch Tools. All right. Under Switch Tools, you should be showing what tools you have. If you have just Arrow, it'll show you just Arrow. You have Bronze Level Software Tool. And it tell you if you're active on your tool one and what your tool is. Mine is Arrow. If you don't show this and you have another tool, you need to switch if you're trying to set up Arrow. If you don't see this and you just see a bunch of boxes, lots of squares like this with empty boxes, go ahead and select launch uh, your tool. Select, there's gonna be a whole drop down of five different softwares. Scroll to the very bottom, select Arrow. 
Once you do that, then it'll look like this. And then what you want to do is just select launch VPS. All right. Once you have selected the launch VPS software you know, uh, button, it'll bring you to your Avoya Prime Connect page. All right. And then first thing you want to do is come down here to VPS accounts, click on the drop down, and select your access pass. Don't worry about this. It's your password. I'll show you how to pull this back up. Also, do not show anyone this password. All right. Uh, I show mine because it's my VPS password. If you log in my VPS, it's only tied to a demo account. So, you know, I, I have to do this to just ensure it uh, for demonstration purposes. So you guys have, you can see exactly how, how to go through everything. So I'm protected. But if you allow anybody to see your password, uh, they can potentially log into your account and do damage. All right. Do not let anybody see this. All right. Once you selected that, you'll see connect to your VPS, reboot your VPS, view password, remote desktop connection. All right. So if you want to connect to your VPS, you can connect to your VPS through the website. It's not recommended. All right. The screen is smaller. The, um, you know, the, the actual picture is not as clear. It's slower. All right. So you want to always connect to your remote desktop connection. All right. Now, what does that mean? Means that if you have a if you have a uh, let me find the picture for you guys if you have a uh, Microsoft based computer go ahead and type in or search for Microsoft Remote Desktop Microsoft Remote Desktop that right there will pull up uh, the tool you need again that's the Remote Desktop connection. You pull that up and allow you to log in to your VPS through the Microsoft Remote Desktop. Here it is. If you do not have, if you have like a Mac, like I do, then you need to go to the uh, to the App Store and download Microsoft Remote Desktop. The icon looks like this. That is what the icon looks like. All right, that's what the icon looks like for Microsoft Remote Desktop. All right, so that's the icon that you want to actually utilize. You want to select that icon. Uh, Microsoft Remote Desktop and download that tool. And then all the credentials for logging in to your Microsoft Remote Desktop to your VPS, because your Microsoft Remote Desktop allows you to log in directly to your VPS uh, through this, this app, all right? This app is gonna give you a full picture. It's gonna give you a better, uh, clearer picture. It's faster connection, all right? And so you find all your login information here. Select Microsoft Remote, uh, select this Remote Desktop connection. It's gonna give you your username, your IP address, your password. Again, do not share this information with anybody. This allows people to log into your VPS and then they could potentially do harm to your software. You know, if you're in trades, they could close them. They could put their own trades on, whatever the case may be. Again, I'm showing this to you because mine leads to a dummy account that is only logged into a demo account. So, they, you know, if you want to trade on my demo account, feel free. You know, it doesn't really matter to me. Again, this is just for demonstration purposes only. All right, but this is the credentials you will need, and I'll show you how to log those in. All right, so we'll go through both. All right, we'll go through both, uh, just so you guys know how to. Uh, if you need to reboot your VPS, you always need to reboot in both places. Number one, inside your VPS, I'll show you where, and then number two, right here where it says reboot VPS. All right, and then if you ever forget your password to uh, your VPS, all right, it's right here, view password. Just select that. So go ahead and copy that. All right. And now this is only password you need if you're logging in through the, to, through the website or as we call it the VNC, virtual network connection. So the VNC, if you go through the website, you only need a password. If you go through your VPS, then you need the password on this year. All right. All right. Now, to log in through your VNC or through the website, select Connect to VPS. All right, pulls it up here. And again, if I'm going too fast, guys, uh, every, every call I do on Sunday is, is recorded. So you can watch this call again. You can go back and watch past calls uh, just in case you missed anything. All right. So it's gonna say press control, alt, delete to sign in. You cannot press control, alt, delete. There are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of protection on the VPS to, to, to protect the software and to protect yourself. 
So do not try and push this, all right? Control Alt Delete, it won't work. You need to come up here where it says send Control Alt Delete and just push that button. All right, then this pops up. Next, select your icon. I've already been logged in before, but you're gonna just select the icon. All right, when it pops up, Trader, you're gonna to wanna to put your password here, but you can't paste it here. So you wanna come up here where it says type or paste password. Go ahead and paste it in this white square up here up top, and then it'll auto populate here. Next, hit the arrow. Once you've done that, ta da, you are now logged into your VPS uh, on your actual uh, computer itself. Through, I'm sorry, through the website, which is this is your VNC. All right, your VNC. As you can see here, you can't see the full screen. It doesn't give you a full screen. All right. This is as big as it will get. All right. It's slower. It's not as clear sometimes. All right. A lot clearer through Microsoft Remote Desktop. All right. So now that we know how to do that, let's go back here. Select Microsoft or I'm sorry, Remote Desktop Connection. Well, I'm sorry. Let's go back into the VPS. Uh, I told you I'd show you where to reboot. So you close your, actually, when you, when you first log in, it'll look like this. It'll, be, it'll look like this. That was my V, this is my MT4 that's logged on. So it will look like this. All right. And you should have arrow at the very top, number one. Or if you have more than one software, if you have more than one, arrow will be one of these four here. All right. As you can see here, it says reboot. You can reboot from inside the VPS, like I showed you. And then you can reboot from outside the VPS. Whenever you need to reboot, like you have a glitch, you have some freezing, whatever the case may be, uh, you need to reboot. But make sure to re reboot in both places. Also, I recommend rebooting once a week, every week. So every um, you know Friday when the market closes, Saturday or Sunday before the market opens, whatever the case may be, whenever you do it, just make sure to reboot once a week. Also, make sure to do a Windows update once a week. So after you reboot for that for the week, you will, you know after it's done rebooting, go ahead and do a Windows update as well. All right, that should be done once a week to make sure your VPS is one hundred percent up to date and you have no issues. All right, now let's go back and we're going to show you how to log into the Microsoft Remote Desktop uh, through that application, which is what, what recommended. All right, so. Uh, first things first, remote desktop connection, you have all your credentials right here, all right? So all you gonna do is copy and paste, all right? I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna show you my Microsoft remote desktop. So share, here is my Microsoft remote desktop. I have a map. So as you see here, I'm logged into three different VPSs. I have my personal, I have the one that I pay for through the company, and then I have my dummy account through the company. All right, that's why I've got three. All right, you can have as many as you want. All right, so to go ahead and set a new one up, you select the plus sign here that says new. Whether you have a, a Mac or you have a, a Windows computer, it's gonna look relatively the same, but you get the plus sign, all right? Let me stop sharing and share the next screen. So once you select the plus sign, here is what it looks like. All right, so again, Connection name, you call what you want. I call mine AP, all right? PC name, you see it says host name or IP address. Here, you type in those random numbers. It's your IP address, all right? It's gonna be some numbers, all right? As you can see, I think mine is one eight. I'm gonna type in mine here so you can see it here. All right. This is my IP address. Again, mine's a dummy account. Do not share yours. And then next, it'll ask you about your credentials, your username and password. Username is always trader. And then password is gonna be that password. Just copy and paste. All right, if you're gonna type it in, make sure you are uh, typing it in correctly. It is case sensitive. You need to type it in exactly the way they have it. That's why it's easier just to copy and paste. Once you've done that, let me delete all mine because I'm already logged in. But once you've done all that, you simply just close it and then it'll populate on the main window here. All right, populate on the main window. All right, next, 
go ahead and log in. All right. So you double click on it and log in. And it'll look something like this right here. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm already logged in. See, it looks very similar in the background. Very similar. All right. Double click on the first one, whatever, which one of these icons says arrow, and it pulls up your VPS. Or I'm sorry, your MT4. And then you have to log in. You got to log into MT4. Uh, as you see, mine's already set up, but that's because we just went through the setup process. So we just kind of went backwards. So now you've seen how to set up the dashboard and then now how to actually set up your VPS. All right, that's it. That is all there is to the setup process. Let me stop sharing to see if anybody has any questions about that. All right, Q&A. All right, chat real quick, make sure everybody set it up. All right, Gabrielle did all the steps on the website. All right, Gabrielle, so you did all the steps on the website. Is there anything else you need help with? Uh, thanks, Nathan, based on last Friday, live trading, got 2,000 pips and gold. Hey, congrats. That's beautiful right there. Uh, all right, 35% of setup process. All right, Daniel, I mean, you just watch me go through the whole setup process. Anything else you can see, you need help with. Uh, that's great. If you do not see arrow or blackout underneath the templates, you need to submit a ticket and let them know that you do not see that. They'll go ahead and add that for you. All right. You must see arrow and blackout, not either or, you have to have both, all right? All right, Daniel, so this call is just for setup calls only. So this is for setup only. We're only gonna go over strategy number one. This is not the right call for uh, anything else. Only time we'll go over anything past the basic setup process and strategy number one is if everyone on the call is set up. But since we've got people that need it set up, we're gonna go over just making sure they get all set up and then we'll go over how to use the dashboard as well as strategy number one. So uh, make sure to get on to um, make sure to get on to uh, the website like I showed you uh, and go through the video. Strategy number nine will walk you through how to use the 200 moving average. All right. And then also get on a live trade sessions as well. Scott, I don't know about that one. The only thing I'd say is refresh. Um, same pairs on the dashboard. Uh, I, I, number one, make sure uh, that if you and your wife both have everything the exact same way set up, make sure that yours is not grayed out. So if yours is grayed out, it means you put something in incorrectly uh, and it won't populate like hers is. Uh, and then also, if that's not the case and everything's set up properly, then go ahead and re you know go ahead and do a reboot. All right. Uh, I know my broker. I know my broker time is different, but what times is that time to check in? Arrow for alerts. Uh, so the best time to trade with the Arrow software is between 12 a.m. Central Standard Time to 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right. Uh, any tips for the future other than arrow? Yeah, if you've learned the arrow bag strategy, uh, the only thing as far as tips for the future is to continue to uh, get better and better using the strategy uh, and then also start using other strategies. Uh, so there are other strategies that you can utilize as well. All right, you start to add more and more strategies to your repertoire. I understand how to use all 10 strategies. Uh, and so there's times where, you know, we're on the calls Live trade sessions, uh, like last week, we on um, all the London sessions, we went 11 and 0. It was our very first week of, of having no losses. We caught over 400 pips on all the live London sessions, and we used about four different strategies. Uh, and then there was some just basic trading, uh, you know, where I just used basic price action, which is not a strategy, but it was just a way of showing people how I trade as well. But we used four different strategies. Sometimes you may only use two strategies. Sometimes you may find yourself using all 10. It really depends on the setups that you see. So the more strategies you know, the better uh, you can be at catching pips because the market will always look different depending on what time of day you're logging in 
So the more strategies you know, the better, because it gives you the most opportunity to catch a setup. All right. All right. So no questions in Q&A. Let me look into the chat. All right, to find a, uh, if you got questions, let me know, Daniel. If you got questions, let me know. Uh, but to find a copy of this recording or the past recordings, you can go to YouTube and you can go to the Avoya Prime YouTube channel uh, and go, go underneath videos and you'll find all the past videos, all the, the live sessions, as well as um, all the setups, setup videos from every Sunday. All right. Joe, no problem, no problem, Joe, Joe, no problem. All right. All right. So no more questions I see here. So what I would do is I'm going to go through, um, for those who are still beginners, I'm going to go through, uh, um, now Fibonacci is, this is not the call for Fibonacci. Uh, this is a set of calls. So I'm going to go through how to use a dashboard, what what everything stands for. Uh, I know where it's, no worries, not at all. Uh, um we'll go through the actual dashboard for all the beginners that are getting set up uh, or just got set up and then we'll go through uh strategy number one all right which is again what this calls for so let's go through and share the screen real quick all right so we've already walked through how to get set up we've already walked through how to set up the dashboard also if you don't have the templates what to do now let's go through what the dashboard shows and let's go through uh how to use the dashboard, all right? We'll go through all that. All right, so first things first, dashboard set up, congratulations. All right, when everything's working, you'll know, if it's great to grayed out, you'll see that these boxes won't be black, they'll be gray. That means you do not enter in something correctly, all right? First is first, the first column here is the symbols. So all the pairs we're going to be trading. Next is SPR, which is the spread. All right, the spread. So the spread is the difference between the bid and ask. All right, so I'm open up a chart here. As you can see on this chart here, there's a red line and a white line. The red line up top is your ask. Whenever you select buy, it's going to always put it at the ask. The white line here is your bid. Anytime you select sell, it's going to always put your entry right there where the white line is at. The gap in between those is what's called the spread, all right? The spread, that's the difference between the bid and ask. You typically for Forex pairs want that to be less than three pips. As you can see here, GP and ZD is more than three pips. So it's signified as red there, all right? The bigger the gap is, the longer it takes for price to get into profit and to close your trades in profit because both the red line, let's say, Let's go back and look at it here. Let's go to GP and ZD. See that gap's bigger, bigger, bigger gap. All right, let's say for example that our take profit, or let's say we're selling from right here. Let's say we sell from right here and it's our take profit line. Both the red line and the white line must be below the purple line, which is our take profit line before the trade closes out in profit. All right, both red line and white line. So the smaller the spread is, the faster it is for price to get below the red line and white line, all right? That's kind of how that works. All right. So that's the spread there. For the gold and indexes, don't worry about it. They're, they're different, significantly different. This, is, this only really pertains to your um, Forex pairs. DLY open is the daily open. That just tells you how many pips since the day started has price moved up or down? If it's green, that means price has moved up X amount of pips. If it's red, it's moved down X amount of pips. All right, so as you can see here, uh, the, just so you guys know, the new day starts every day, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. So today is Sunday. The market opened up on Sunday for the new week and for the new day at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right, since then, you can see everything has moved for, for the most part up for the day, almost everything is green. If it's orange, that means it's moved down for the day from where it opened. So you see here, GER, let's click on GER. All right, it opened up here and it's moved down as of right now, all right?
GJ opened up here. And this divided line right here is your day. This is your, this, this is your uh, period separator. It lets you know what the day is. You see, open up down here, and it's moved up for the day. All right, if you don't have this period separator right here, actually, you should, because this template has it already built in. So you should have this populated right here. All right, for some reason you don't, right click on the black of the screen, come down to properties, go to common, so we're on the common page, and select for the check mark on show period separators. Hit OK. All right, again, right click on the black of the screen, select properties, move up here to common, make sure common selected. You see this screen here, check mark next to show period separators, select OK. All right, that's how that works. All right. Weekly open means how many pips price has moved and in what direction for the week. All right, so right now, GJ is up 61 pips for the week and for the day because today started a new week and a new day. All right, so on Wednesday, this could say 500 pips, 500, which means that since the day opened or since the week opened on Sunday, price between Sunday and Wednesday has moved up 500 pips. If it's orange, it's moved down. All right, and then ADR. ADR, it should say 10 underneath because you should change it to number of days. ADR number of days should be set at 10. ADR number of days should be set at 10, all right, at 10. ADR stands for average daily range. Average daily range um, is the average number of pips price has moved for a specific symbol on a given daily basis every day on average. So it's, since we have 10, it's going to be the average of 10 days. So for GBP, JPY, on average for the last 10 days, price has moved up or down. So it's average daily range has moved 94 pips on average. All right. Now, why is this significant? All right. This is significant because if the average number of pips, if price gets to the average number of pips for the day, so you see here, it's at 90 of 94. That What that means is most likely, most likely, it's never guaranteed, price is going to turn around in the opposite direction because it's exhausted its average daily range. And typically, that means there may be a reversal happening. And as you saw here on GBP, JPY, it hit it, and what is it doing? It's been reversing the opposite way. It ran up. Now it's reversing. All right. And then you have the squares here. As you see here, GBP CHF just popped up. We got a little notification. I closed it. And it's red on the M5. You select that, that means a down arrow has shown up. All right. That's what that is. When this candle, now again, when you pop it up, you'll see the next candle. You are not late. All right. The arrows only show up when the candle closes. So you will always get in the trade on the next candle. All right. On the next candle. All right. That's how it's set up. All right. It will only show up when the candle that the arrow is pointing to closes and the new candle next, you know, pops up. All right. So if it's red, that means there's a down arrow. If it's green, it means it's an up arrow. All right. Uh, as you can see here, these are your time frames. Remember, we only selected these four. And underneath them are timers. So under M5, you see it says one minute, 31 seconds. That means in a minute, 31 seconds, a new five minute candle will pop up. They lag a little bit, um, but they're there. And lagging means they won't count down where you see every number. You know, it'll, it'll freeze a little bit and then show you like the next five seconds. So it gives you an idea of how much time until the next candle for that time frame. So for the H4, the four hour candle, we still have two hours, 11 minutes until the next four hour candle pops up. All right. To ensure also this is populating right, you wanna make sure that you have the smiley face showing here in the top right hand corner, arrow dashboard smiley face. If it's not smiley, then you need to make sure two things. Number one, your auto trading button is turned on. You see right here, auto trading is turned on. It's green, not red. And then number two, if not, you want to make sure that under common, 
allow live trading is turned on. It's, it's selected. If that is both selected, you will have smiley face. All right. Next, uh, if you want to add a pair, if you want to adjust anything, just click on the smiley face and it'll bring you back to your settings. Go to inputs, make your changes, then select OK. Yeah, it'll refresh. Sometimes it doesn't refresh. It doesn't refresh for you in the first, I say, 15 seconds. Then just click on a time frame, close it, and then come back to it. Let me close this one too. Come back to it, give it a second, it'll refresh. There we go. We get to go. So if after 30 seconds it's still blank, just click on one of the time frames on one of the boxes here, pull up a chart, close it, and then come back and watch for about 10 seconds. It'll, it'll populate. All right. Uh, that's the dashboard, guys. That is the dashboard. All right. So now the goal is whenever we get a notification of an arrow, we select it and we want to go take a look at it. All right. We want to go select a look at it. So we have an arrow on the what? Down arrow on EUR GBP H1 chart. All right, see that H1 chart? That's the column. And the row is EUR GBP. I selected that. It populates this. All right. So this pulls up, and you see here, this is the EUR GBP H1 chart. It automatically pulls up the pair and the time frame you have the alert on for you, which is great. Next, you zoom out. All right, so now I'm going to take you strategy number one. All right, bag, B-A-G. All right, everyone knows, you know, bag is slang for getting paid, get money. But with arrow, bag stands for bounce, arrow, go. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to zoom all the way out. Zoom all the way out, and you want to count your zones. Well, actually, before we go there, let me just talk about arrow in itself. All right, let me go, it's easier to see on the 15 minutes. Let's go to 15 minutes. All right, so arrow in itself. So as you can see here, the arrow dashboard is nothing more and i'm gonna show you what the uh, uh man, you guys already know hold on real quick all right this is the chart without the dashboard all right this is what it looks like i'm sorry without arrow this is what arrow i mean the, the actual chart looks like without without arrow so you, you know you you don't really have any idea of what's going on from a standpoint of you know what's the overall trend when do I get in? When do I not get in? Is price at a level of support, resistance? All right. With the actual software now on, you can see here a couple of things. Green zones, red zones. The candles are all green. Here they're all red. A blue line, a gray shaded area. Arrow pips and a number zero. What does all this mean? You know, arrows. I'm going to walk you through it real quick. And then we'll show you strategy number one. And then we'll call it a day. So first thing first. You have green, these green zones, you have red zones, all right? The green zones are support or the floor. The red zones are the ceiling or resistance, all right? So imagine a ball. If I drop a ball on the floor, what does it do? It hits the floor and it bounces back up. If I take that same ball and I throw it at the ceiling, it hits the ceiling and it bounces what? Back down. That is all price does all day, every day. It bounces like a ping pong ball back and forth off the floor and the ceiling. You see, floor, bounce up, ceiling, bounce down. That's it, all day long. The goal is knowing when to get in and in what direction. And that's what arrow allows you to do with some of the rules, all right? Because arrow is nothing more than just a visual representation of what the market is doing, all right? Which gives you the opportunity, all right? The opportunity to um, get in to the trade in the right direction and catch some pips. All right, so that's what the green zones, red zones are. All right, we never want to trade into a zone unless you are experienced and you know where price is going, you got a strategy, then sure. But if you're a beginner, you don't trade into support and resistance zones. All right. Uh, next, as you see here, why are all these green? And then why are all these red? All right, so there's special software built in or special code built into the software so that when price is overall trending up, as you see here, it's gonna be green. It's a visual representation letting you know the overall trajectory of price. If it's trending down, it's gonna be red. All the candles will be red, all right? Gives you that visual rep representation. 
The blue line here is the arrow moving average. If price is green, it's typically above the moving average. If it's red, it's typically below for the majority of the point, all right? Just gives you another representation. Visually, oh, we're above the group, we're above the moving average and it's green, uptrend. Below in red, downtrend, all right? The gray shaded area happens every day. This is what's called the money zone, all right? The money zone uh, happens between 12 p.m., oh, I'm sorry, 12 a.m. Central Standard Time to 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. That 12 hour time is important. It's called the money zone because over 80% of all money traded in Forex happens during that time frame. So that 12 hours of the day is when over 80% of the market is traded. All right, as you can see here, outside, price doesn't move much. Inside, big movements. Outside, doesn't move much. Inside, big movements. All right, sometimes you do get big movements outside the money zone, but for the majority of time, you're gonna have the majority of your uh, movement inside of the money zone, all right? You see here, arrow pips and number zero, this is your pip counter. So I thought it was pretty cool to add this on there. Anytime you're in a trade, you, let's say you're into five different trades on five different pairs. No matter what chart you're on, it will let you know if you're up or down on those trades, all right? So it gives you a visual representation of what you're doing. All right, of what's going on. All right, and then next is the arrows. All right, these are my proprietary strategy. So these arrows pop up for three different reasons, all right, based on three different strategies. One strategy is a counter trend strategy, all right, so a potential for a turnaround. Another strategy is confirmation trend. So when the trend has been confirmed, they have changed. And then number three is a continuation of the trend. So when price pulls back and then heads back in the same direction, all right, that's a continuation. So those are the three strategies uh, on why these arrows pop up, all right? There's multiple confirmations for these arrows to pop up. That's it, that is the arrow software. Now, how do you utilize it for strategy number one? Great, great you ask. So we're here on the 15 minute chart for EUR GBP. First thing we do is we zoom out all the way and we count our zones. We have three red zones, two green zones. So guess what? We are in a downtrend. We should be looking for sales only, sale trades only, all right? Rule number two, only take sale trades inside the money zone. Because again, we wanna trade in the direction of the trend and we also want to trade with the money, all right? With the money, the majority of the money, all right? So only take sell trades inside the money zone. And then rule number three is only take bag entry sale trades inside the money zone. So what does a bag entry mean? All right, it means bounce arrow go. All right, so let me find one here that meets all the rules. I don't think we have, here we go. So you see we have one here. What we want is we want price, if it's in a sale, it's like the ball. Remember when the ball bounces off the ceiling, it heads down. So you want price to bounce off the ceiling, bounce off resistance, give you an arrow underneath the moving average, then you sell. So you see right here, price came up, bounced off this red zone, came down, that's a bounce. White arrow pops up, you get in, you sell. You see it dropped 22 pips. It dropped even more if you held it, but it dropped 22 pips right there. That's it. So if you're selling, you want price to bounce off resistance, then you want price to come down below the moving average and give you a down arrow. All right, and the one thing that will keep you from entering that trade is if you have a green zone or a support zone right here. So you see it's too close. You want there to be no green zone. You see like right here, no green zone. You want there to be no green zone within 20 pips or more. So you want there to be 20 pips or more between your entry and the green zone. Or you want there to be no zone at all, all right? Before you enter the trade. That's the only thing that will keep you from entering the trade. All right? That's it. And the same thing goes for if the trend is up. So if you have more green zones than red zones, then look, bounce off the floor, you know, support, head up, get your up arrow, 
You get in, next candle, and you see it ran up 31 pips. That's it. That's if you're an uptrend. If you have more green zones than red zones, you want price or the ball to bounce off the floor and head up. Bounce off the floor, it's up. It's above the moving average. You got an arrow, enter the trade. Take profit, if you're on the M15, which is what I teach the majority on, is 20 pip take profit. Stop loss is 40 pips, all right? That is pretty much it, guys, for uh, Arrow, the dashboard, and strategy number one. Let me stop sharing, see if we got any questions here. All right, someone asked, how am I bringing up the charts with the boxes? All right, so let's go back and look at it. This is a step that you, you know, I made sure to tell you guys about in the, when you set up the dashboard, not to miss. All right, so when you click a box, it's gonna pull up a chart with arrow already on it. If that does not happen for you, then you did not set up arrow, I mean, you didn't set up the dashboard correctly. So you need to go back in here to the dashboard, click on the smiley face. And then down here, template for new chart. Remember, we typed in arrow, all capital letters here. You need to, it used to say default. Delete default, type in arrow, all capitals, A-I-R-O. If you do not, you and select OK. All right. You must have arrow underneath your templates. If you don't have that, it won't work. All right. Therefore, you need to submit a ticket. If you've done that, then when you select this here, it'll pull up the chart with arrow already on it. All right. When can I see today's recording? Uh, you can see it typically within about 12 hours. Uh, so sometime tomorrow morning. But again, this same call I do every Sunday. So you can go back and watch the last six weeks. Uh, I think we've had the dashboard live now for about two months. So you can go back and watch the last two months and, and be able to see it all. And it's the same information. All right. So you don't have to wait for this specific, specific one. You can go over the last couple of calls. All right. Uh, let me check the Q and A. Um, how can I update Arrow? Why would you? What do you want to update? All right, so the candles are going to come. They're going to come red and green for you. Are automatically. The candles are going to be automatically red and green for you with the Arrow software on there. So you remember, just follow the rules of adding Arrow on there on your dashboard. So when you pull it up. You can do it. Also, I'll tell you, for those who don't like using the dashboard or don't want to use it, let's say you only look at two pairs. All right, then great. Close everything out. All right, open up a pair. Let's say all you look at, let's say the only thing you trade is GBP USD. All right, then great. Pull up the templates, pull up arrow, and bada bing, bada boom. You got it set up. And you don't need to have the dashboard because the arrow template will send you notifications as well. So you don't need it. Every time you get an arrow, it'll let you know. All right. And now uh, one last thing. If you want to get notifications to your phone so that you don't have to have the computer look, you know, looking at your computer all the time. Let me pull my phone up real quick here. And I'll show you real quick. All right. So the first thing you want to do is to get notifications, you want to uh, let's see here. You want to make sure you have the Meta Trader 4. Meta, M E T A, Trader, T R A D E R, 4, not 5. Meta Trader 4 app on your phone or your tablet. If you're on, you know, for me, I've got it on my phone. All right. You want to download the Meta Trader 4 app on your phone. All right. You want to then log in to your account. So you want to be logged into your account on your computer and on your phone. That way you can receive the notifications. All right. Next, you want to come up here to tools. All right. So you want to do this inside on your laptop. All right. Laptop, desktop, wherever you first set up arrow at, come to options. So you want to go to tools, options, notifications. All right. Under notifications, you want to do what? You want to select enable push notifications. All right. And then right here, you need to type in your MetaQuotes ID number. Now, this MetaQuotes ID number is going to come from your phone, all right, from your phone or your mobile app, whether if you want your notification to go to your phone or your tablet. 
So on your app, you want to go to your settings. All right. If you have an iPhone, settings is in the bottom right hand corner. If you have an Android, settings is in the top left hand corner. Android, top left hand corner for settings. Uh, iPhone, bottom right hand corner. Once you select settings, you want to select chat and messages. Chat and messages. All right. Once you select that, you'll get this blank screen. And at the bottom, your meta quotes ID number. All right. Type that in here and select test. It'll send a test notification to your phone, and now you're good to go. So now every time that little pop-up box pops up with a notification, it'll also send it to your phone. All right, now after you've done that, you wanna make sure that you go to your notifications on your phone, and you wanna make sure that you turn notifications on for the MetaTrader 4 app. You gotta have those notifications turned on. You can receive all the notifications all you want, but if your notifications for that app is not turned on for your phone, then you'll never get them, all right? All right, stop sharing. Let's see if anybody has any more questions. All right, if you, the black background for the dashboard is under templates. Template, dashboard. We already went over this here a couple of times. Templates right here, this icon, blackout. So under templates, blackout. If you don't have it, submit a ticket. All right, submit a ticket. Steven, congrats, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, can you trade US 30 and Nas 100 with the same strategy? Yes, the take profit and stop loss are different with indexes. I don't teach on those uh, we, you know, on, on, on beginner calls. We talk about those on live sessions, but there are people that trade US 30 and Nas 100 every day and make very good money and very good returns uh, on the indexes. Anything, your broker has, you can trade with Arrow and the bag strategy. The bag strategy works on everything. Stocks, Forex, precious metals, energies, indexes, and even cryptocurrency, all right? Strategy number one works on everything, all right? I thank you guys, thank you guys. Thank everybody for jumping on the call. All right, any other questions, guys? We are seven minutes over here. We are seven minutes over. Give it a couple seconds here to see if anybody has any more questions. Uh, trading view version release soon. No ETA. No ETA. No ETA. So there is no time limit right now for that when that's going to be released. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? Give it a couple more minutes here. Do we have an arrow logo we can use? Um, it's a good question. I've got one, but I don't own the arrow logo. Uh, you know, the software, my name I gave for the software is different. So I own my logo, but the arrow logo is owned by the company. Uh, the arrow name and, and logo and all that. So I'll have to, I'll have to ask the company if we can even make that available. Um, but right now, yeah, I don't, I don't have a logo that you guys can can, can utilize. Uh, but I'll, I'll have to ask the company about that. That's interesting. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a question for the company, the owners. Anyone demo on Monday and Tuesday? Not really sure what you mean by that demo Monday and Tuesday. Can this be used with binary? Yes, it can be used with binary. Uh, binary options, we are working on releasing the launch for binary options soon, so be ready. Be prepared for those who know what it is. For those who don't, you'll find out. There is no uh, ETA on binary options right now, all right? But it's coming, and it's coming fast. There's no that. Strategy number one is always, yep, it's always the same, 20 pip, TP, 40 pip stub loss. Only for Forex pairs. 20 pip TP, 40 pip stop loss, only four experience. Everything else is different. All right, everything else is different. Live trading, there is live trading Monday and Tuesday. Yep. So uh, look out for the notifications. Matter of fact, I probably will be doing New York sessions this week. So look out, I'll probably be doing New York sessions and London sessions. 
Um, try, I'm gonna try to do all of them. I'm gonna do all London for sure, my usual time. Uh, but uh, I'm probably looking to try to get on um, majority. I'll be on Tuesday for sure. So we have, uh, if you're in the Arrow Bag chat, uh, there is pinned to the top of the group, the schedule. You can go in there and find the schedule uh, for all live sessions. Also, and let's go look at it on the website. So we'll go to the website here, share. All right, so we're on the website here. If you come over here to news and events and come down here to events calendar, the events calendar will tell you every time there's a live session. All the live sessions are here and what time? All right, and these times are in Eastern Standard Time, Eastern Standard, all right? But here's the schedule. There are a total of 11 calls uh, for Arrow each week, 11 live trade sessions, all right? Three with me, uh, three with the, the team on New York, and five with the Hawkeye Group Monday through Friday, all right? All right, guys, uh, we are 10 minutes after the hour. Uh, I appreciate every last one of you guys. Again, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Uh, and if you're going to trade tonight, uh, make sure you trade responsibly. And I'll see you guys in the funny papers. Thank you.